When it comes to deck boxes for Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and other standard size trading card games, there's an ever-growing amplitude of choices. This video will compare and contrast the Desk Flask by Geek Chic, the perhaps misnamed and certainly modular monolith by Kaka Popo, the Fire Palmer handcrafted flame deck box by Leaf Kicker, and the brand new Seer deck box by Box Gods. More than a few of these boxes are far from perfect, so which should you select to protect your deck from getting wrecked? Stay tuned and you'll find out in a sec. Let's begin with Geek Chic's Desk Flask, which, despite its name, is designed to store standard-sized trading cards and not alcoholic imbibements. Available in three sizes, the Desk Flask can store 60, 75, or 100 sleeved cards. The design is that two wooden deck boxes slide over one another to create a nesting closure, which Geek Chic describes as providing twice the protection. All Desk Flasks come with a rubber band to hold the two ends together because, well, the two ends simply do not stay together whatsoever. Do not lose or break this rubber band as I did, or you will wind up with a deck box that won't stay closed. This is particularly disappointing to me as I feel that expecting a rubber band as a solution to a deck box that won't stay closed is far from ideal. It's too easily going to slide off or snap, or as I admit it happened to me, simply become lost. The flasks come in a variety of woods, from cherry to maple to walnut and oak. Along the interior, I can visibly see where the sides have been glued together. It doesn't look particularly seamless, and the wood itself is very thin and lightweight. The flask also scratches very easily. I found after a few trips to my local game store, the surface was visibly scuffed and scratched. For me, when I purchase wooden deck boxes, I pay extra not just for their look and style, but for the longevity that fine wood craftsmanship can bring. While Aaron Kane, Wormwood, and Crossbow boxes all have their differences, after years of use for all, I have yet to see any significant damage to the boxes. What you are seeing here happened in in less than a week. So if you don't have the rubber band, well, there's going to be a problem, but there's another issue as well. So I've reviewed several wooden deck boxes on the channel before, and one thing that I noticed was that all of them boasted about their endurance, even going so far as to encourage people to stand upon them. Geek Chic, however, did not boast this, and since the box felt very light and flimsy in my hand, I thought I would give it a test. And before you make any comments about how dusty my floor is, take a good long look at the floor you're walking on before you judge. <laughs> Geek Chic boasts solid hardwood construction for a lifetime of play, but I'm afraid my testing showed otherwise today. Ranging from $32.50 to $40 in price, depending on size and wood, there's just too many items in that range that are far better buys. I'm not a fan of these at all, and the grade is a D for do not recommend. Next, we have the Kaka Popo Monolith Deck Box Tower, not to be confused with the Ultimate Guard Monolith. Not sure they're allowed to call theirs a monolith as well, but. 
that's for Ultimate Guard's lawyers to confirm. The deck box is constructed of a textured hard plastic with metal fixtures and latches. It comes with two deck box trays that can each fit about 120 double-sleeved guards and a couple of plastic dividers. It's solidly built and has a vintage steamer trunk aesthetic to it. The box comes in black with silver trim as well as silver with, I guess, more silver trim? However, what is particularly befuddling about this box is how unnecessarily finicky it is to open, close, and put back together. They're going for a modular design here where all the pieces come apart and can go back in different orders, and I like that, but it also makes it needlessly cumbersome. In order to access my decks, I'll need to remove the top, then flip the deck box over, then remove the other lid, hoping that I put my deck in the right way up. I'm also left with about five different pieces I'll need to reassemble when I'm done with gameplay. And it's not always intuitive at first glance where each piece goes where. With enough practice, I did become familiar with the various components and finally got it correct every time, but I'm not a fan of how asymmetrical and fiddly this product is. And no, that lid is not for holding dice and counters as I had suspected. Oops. Also, the box is really quite large and clunky. Yes, it is holding 220 card decks, but if we compare it to the Ultimate Guard dual flip and tray, which holds the same, or just the Ultimate Guard monolith or Ultra Pro Tower, then we can see how the Kaka Popo deck box is far from sleek and slender. And also with those latches protruding, it really makes it annoying for sliding it in and out of your bag. In addition to all of this, this box doesn't even have space for dice or counters, which the other three designs show here each has. For a product of this size, that's both perplexing and disappointing. Now, if for some reason you'd like to add more deck box space to your tower, the Kaka Popo Monolith actually has modular attachments you can purchase to add on. Ad infinitum. Each attachment is identical to the middle part of the original deck box, tray included, and you can stack them on each other as needed. While this conceit is almost clever, it makes for a very awkward deck box tower. I mean, is this really the best way to add space? Space? So while there is a cleverness to this modular design, I really question what exactly we are building with it. I love the idea of a customizable deck box where you can set it up as you need it, but is this what you need? Obviously, I've put them all together for an extreme example, but even going down, to three main compartments with a closure on each end. This is now holding 320 card decks approximately. Is this really what you wanna be taking down to Friday Night Magic, storing in your backpack? It's steady, it's sturdy, I'll give it that, but is it really optimal? Overall grade is a C plus. While there's a bit of inspiration in this deck box design, the execution makes certain that it's promising start goes no further. Have you ever wanted to hold fire in your hands? Thanks to the Fire Palmer deck box by Leaf Kicker, imagination has once again been made tangible, and this deck box is shaped and molded to resemble burning flame. Handcrafted from a polyurethane casting resin, Leaf Kicker has incorporated cold cast techniques using 325 mesh metal powders, special dyes, and acrylic paint, and finished all of this with three coats of auto-grade clear protectorant. Hey, and it even has a button that lights it up.
The deck box unscrews at the base to hold 100 double-sleeved cards. They fit a little tight, and I wish there was just a bit more wiggle room to accommodate a few tokens, or perhaps thicker sleeves. Nevertheless, as I have said in the past, these high-luxury artisan deck boxes are more about individuality and style, the form rather than the function, which is why it is disappointing that the interior looks so unappealing. Now, I want to point out this is a smooth, clean interior despite how it looks. It's not actually dusty or full of holes, but the resin happens to have spots and bubbles and, well, I don't know the technical term for it, but visually it is not very striking. Is this a major problem? No, of course not. But if the thesis of these type of deck boxes is to focus on how they look, then the interior experience, which I'm going to see every time I go for my cards to take them out or put them away, well, that experience is part of it. Quite frankly, it looks kind of dirty and ugly on the inside, even though it actually is not dirty. In addition to all of this, I am disappointed that the light does not work particularly well, if at all, when a deck is actually stored inside it. I adore the fact this deck box lights up, but when that feature is essentially disabled when I put a deck in it, well, again, this is far from any sort of major problem, but I feel they are aesthetic areas that can be improved upon. As always, with what is essentially a vanity or luxury Magic the Gathering item, you are using different criteria. This is not exactly the deck box that you're going to take to a GP. Rather, it's what you're going to put your favorite Magic the Gathering deck in. Hopefully, the artistry of this piece expresses or embodies something about that deck or yourself as a player. It's a talking point. It's a thing for that which is most special special to you in the game, and it is more meant to be put on the shelf and admired when friends come over to play. Holds 100 double-sleeved cards, heavy, solid, handcrafted resin, amazing artistry. Grade is a B plus. I'd still like to see that interior cleaned up and the light either made to work with the deck box in it, or you know what, maybe it doesn't need to light up and we can replace it with storage for dice encounters. Brand new on the scene is the Sear deck box. The Sear is constructed of high grade machined aluminum with acrylic side windows and dual four port magnetic covers. Honestly, this looks to me like something made by NASA. Currently, the Sear only comes in one style, which is a three compartment design. Although it is available in a wide variety of colors, the main compartment can hold 75 single sleeved or 65 double sleeved cards, with a second compartment which can hold 25 single sleeved or 15 double sleeved cards. So ultimately, this is going to be for players with standard 75 card decks. While EDH and Commander players can make use of the Sear, your deck has to be single sleeved and also all 100 cards will have to be divided between the two compartments. I hope very much we will see additional sizes and variations offered soon. I kind of wish that the divider had the option of coming out too. The third and bottom compartment is for dice and counters, but sadly, it is too shallow for the standard Magic the Gathering spin-down dice. Smaller D20s and of course small counters fit fine, but it's a bummer this can't fit the most commonly used size of spin-down for Magic the Gathering players. Really love that sound. It's a strong magnetic closure, perhaps a little too strong because unfortunately, just in my testing, one of the magnets on my lid has popped out. And so, a little hard to show on camera, I'll show you a close up, but this now only has three affixed magnets and one that has become detached does not really fill me with confidence about where this is going to be after a year of long-term use. So I think that there's more improvements that can be made along those same lines. Well, it's one magnet fewer, but you'll just have to take my word for this. Even when the fourth magnet was attached during my play testing, 
I found that they're still not strong enough to hold in a deck of cards when you shake the box. They really should be, considering how many of them there are. Boy, I really wish that magnet had not popped out on me. Because everything else is just minor areas in need of improvement. And everywhere else, the sear does excel where it counts, quality. This thing is solid construction and design. And for a first outing, this is excellent. But we need to focus on quality control in regards to those magnets, a larger third compartment, and hopefully new sizes and layouts. This is still a very good deck box, and I'd say the grade is a solid B. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a comment. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.